Hello, fifth graders. This is chapter two, lesson three, and chapter two, lesson four of the Ecosystem Restoration Unit. We are combining lesson three and lesson four. For lesson three, we are going to be skipping activities one and two. For lesson four, we are going to be skipping activity two. So let's go ahead and get started. As an ecologist, you are working to figure out why the cercopia trees aren't growing and thriving. In order to figure out the answer to this question, you have been investigating where food molecules for plants come from. Let's review some basic information about plants. Our first photo is of the inside of a leaf that was taken using a microscope. The green dots are where the plant makes food matter. Our next photo is showing that plants use their leaves to collect energy from the sun. Our third photo is taken through a microscope where you can see the tiny holes on the surface of a leaf that let gases in from the air. Our photo below shows that plants may not move fast, but sometimes the roots are powerful enough to break through solid rock. And our last picture shows that roots take in water from the soil. So let's use some of that information and the information we learned from reading Energy Makes It All Go and from our simulation and answer this question. What do you think plants use their food molecules for? To answer, answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson three dash four activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you or you can think about your answer in your head. Go ahead and pause the video and answer this question now. Through our activities and our investigations, we have come to learn this key concept. Plants use water molecules, carbon dioxide, molecules from the air, and energy from the sun to make food. So let's put this key concept into action. We will work with this model of an ecosystem to show our understanding of where plants get their food molecules and how they use those molecules. You will see familiar features like some of the organisms. The empty boxes represent matter moving through the ecosystem. You can see the empty boxes right here. You'll also see two new types of matter, carbon dioxide and water. They can only be placed in the boxes with the arrows pointing to the grass. The goal is to show the amount of matter moving through the ecosystem when there are more plants. To model this, you'll use the drop-down menu to change the grass to very healthy. Then, you'll drag the matter cards into the empty boxes. You can use the drop-down menus to show how the flow of matter in the ecosystem affects the populations of the other organisms. Let's complete the model together. Or, you can continue the video and access, or access through Amplify. To access the model through Amplify, you're going to log in. Once you log in, go to the Ecosystem Restoration Unit and then click on the blue box with the three on it to access this modeling tool. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now let's take a look at our modeling tool and get started on our simulation. Okay, so if you remember, I need to change the plants to very healthy because we want to see what happens when there are more plants. I'm going to do a normal amount of food matter, a normal amount of carbon dioxide, and a normal amount of water, and a normal amount of food matter for zebras. And let's see what happens. All right, so if there's more plant and it's very healthy and a normal amount of food matter is going into the zebras, I think they would be normal and healthy. With the amount of food matter being normal and healthy for the zebras, that would make the cheetahs normal and healthy, which would make the amount of water normal and healthy and the amount of carbon dioxide normal and healthy. By looking at this model, I can see the flow of energy. So the water goes into the plants, so does the carbon dioxide. And then the plants have the energy go into the zebras, 
And then the zebras have food matter and the energy goes into the cheetahs. Okay, so let's go ahead and close out of this and back to our presentation. So now that we talked about how matter and energy flow through an ecosystem, let's answer this question. How do plants use carbon dioxide, water, and energy from sunlight? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson three dash four activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about your answer in your head. Go ahead and pause the video and answer this question now. Once you have completed the question, that is all I have for lesson three, activity three. Thank you so much. Hello, fifth graders. This is chapter two, lesson three, and chapter two, lesson four of the Ecosystem Restoration Unit. Remember, we are combining these lessons. For lesson three, we are skipping activities one and two. For lesson four, we are skipping activity two. So let's go ahead and continue. So now that we've learned about more about where plants get food molecules, let's think about how what we have learned applies to the Costa Rican rainforest project area. So looking over here at our image, we have our Costa Rican rainforest ecosystem. We have three-toed sloth, we have jaguars, soil, millipedes, and cercopia trees. So what you're going to do now is open to page 40 of your ecosystem restoration workbook, or you're going to turn to page four of your chapter two, lesson three dash four activity packet. You're going to review the directions, and as an ecologist, you're going to remember to use scientific language to record your ideas. You're going to write an explanation where food molecules for Socopia trees come from using the image of the eco Costa Rican ecosystem. So go ahead, pause the video, and write your explanation. Now that you have written your explanation, let's continue. So we are going to continue to observe ecosystems. In this case, we will observe using our simulation. So, so far we have learned that animals use some food molecules to release energy. So I want you to answer this question. Do you think plants also use some food molecules for energy? To answer this question, you can use your chapter two, lesson three dash four activity packet, a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about your answer in your head. Pause the video and answer this question now. Let's propose a claim. Some of us think that plants, like animals, use some food molecules to release energy. And some of us disagree. We can think about the evidence supporting the claim that plants use for energy. We'll use the sim to investigate whether plants use food molecules to release energy. You can see the video of the simulation, or you can log on to Amplify to complete the simulation yourself. To log on to the simulation yourself, you're going to log on to Amplify. You are going to click on Ecosystem Restoration Unit, and then you are going to click the orange box with the number one to access the simulation. I'm going to go ahead and do this now. So I'm going to click on the number one and wait for it to open. To investigate how plants release energy, I'm going to turn off the part that says Show Matter. I'm going to press play. I'm also going to move it up to times two so it goes a little bit faster. So we can see that the yellow circles are our energy. So right now we can notice that the leaves or the plants are absorbing the sun's energy. And then it's transferring either to the ground or to the rabbits. I also see some energy transferring to the rabbits as well as to the wolves. I can also see energy going into the mushrooms as animals and plants de die. 
or as it decomposes droppings. I also notice that each one of our organisms is keeping in some energy for it to use. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the simulation and go back to the presentation. So now that we've analyzed the simulation, this is our next question. What is the evidence to plants? Let's try that again. What is the evidence to support the claim that plants use some food molecules for energy or not? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson three dash four activity packet in a notebook. You can think about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about your answer in your head. Pause the video and answer this question now. One key concept that we have solidified during this time is that animals use some food molecules to release energy for movement and growth. So as we keep going, make sure you keep this key concept in mind. Hello, fifth graders. This is chapter two, lesson three, and chapter two, lesson four of the Ecosystem Restoration Unit. Remember, we are combining these two lessons, so let's go ahead and continue our learning. To begin, let's look at two claims or possible answers to the question, where do you think energy in an ecosystem comes from? We'll investigate to see what we can observe about energy by using the sim. As we investigate, you'll think about which claim is better supported by the evidence. Possible claims about energy are claim one, all energy in an ecosystem is made by plants, and claim two, energy in an ecosystem can always be traced back to the sun. Remember, you are picking a claim that is better or best supported by the evidence, not the one that you like the best. To complete this activity and to choose a claim, you are going to turn to page 42 of your Ecosystem Restoration Workbook or page 6 of your Chapter 2, Lesson 3-4 Activity Packet. In Part 1, you will record how you plan to investigate the question, and then in parts two and three, we'll involve you sharing what you figure out. You are going to use the simulation to find evidence to support the claims and record your evidence. You can either think back to the video or you can go back to the previous video and rewatch the part where we looked at the simulation. To really get us started and before we dive into the activity, let's think about this question. What evidence supports this claim? Claim one, all energy in an ecosystem is made by plants. To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson three dash four activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you or you can think about it in your head. Pause the video and answer this question. For answering a question about claim one, we also need to answer one about claim two. So what evidence supports this claim? Energy in an ecosystem can always be traced back to the sun. To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter two, lesson three dash four activity packet. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about your answer in your head. Pause the video again and answer this question. Once both questions seven and eight are answered, you can repause the video and complete page 42 or page six and answer those questions and choose a claim that is best supported by your evidence. So go ahead, pause the video and get started. Now that you have completed finding evidence about energy, answer this question. Based on what you found out from investigating with the SIM, which claim do you now think is best supported by the evidence? To answer this question, you can write the answer in chapter two, lesson three dash four activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about your answer. You can go ahead, pause the video, and write down your answer. This concludes our chapter two, lesson three and four. 
Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you in Lesson 5.